as the credits rolled on Godzilla minus one, someone in the audience began to clap. Then someone else clapped. Then someone else. After a few seconds, the cinema was filled with the sounds of people applauding the scrolling text on the big screen. This isn't something that normally happens, like ever. In the UK, people watch films at the cinema in silence and don't make noise until they are outside and can talk with their friends and family about it. Even during the height of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's glory days, people kept respectfully quiet. But on this day, a UK cinema put their hands together. On this day, the general public were applauding a Godzilla film. Godzilla Minus One is the filmiest film I have seen in a long time. It feels like a filmmaker from the 1950s was transported to nowadays. It has all the trappings of a post-war, nuclear age, sci-fi monster flick, but with modern filming and special effects. It also feels like those scenes from Godzilla expanded into a full film. Not the American Godzilla Killing the Monsters exclamation mark film, the original Godzilla, where people offhandedly mention radioactive fish or poisoned water supplies. The film has the feel of those scenes to it, that semi-oppressive yet somehow this is normal vibe, with the unique situations that come with it. In fact, there are a few shots and scenes that feel like homages to the original Godzilla, like this is an alternative timeline, with echoes of the other still present. Godzilla Minus One is all about post-war Japan from the perspective of the people who lived through it. That's one thing that distinguishes this film from its 1950s predecessors. We're not following the generals or the politicians or some super secret completely made up organisation. We're following the average people. On top of that, everything we saw in and gleaned from the trailers, from the soldier being hated for surviving the war to the way Godzilla's breath works, all of it was in the film. And it was all done pretty flipping well, for the most part. The story is good enough that if Godzilla was completely removed and it was all about the personal emotional downfall of a failed kamikaze pilot post-war, it still would have been a great story. The acting is solid and highly emotional, but just shy of being over the top that it doesn't spoil the seriousness of the scenes. The special effects look brilliant and for the most part mesh with the environment of the era very naturally. Speaking of, the whole film, especially its larger scenes, has a texture to it that makes it feel like we're in the post-war era, like it's one of those black and white films that's been colorized. The action is intense, with high stakes and a sense of dread for those involved. And Godzilla is bloody terrifying throughout, especially in his opening scene. His introduction is different, yet familiar to previous films not only in the franchise, but of those aforementioned 50s classics. Indeed, whenever he enters a scene, he makes an impact, especially in one particular instance. The reimagined nuclear breath is harrowing to say the least and many of his scenes are 
reminiscent of GMK in terms of walking the line between action and horror, as well as thematics. I think it says a lot about Godzilla Minus One that I can talk in such vagaries about it for so long without mentioning Godzilla. I could go on, but I think I'll wait until the film is out to properly go through and reference everything. But it's safe to say, Godzilla Minus One has a lot to offer. It's not a perfect film, mind you. Although the emotional acting is on point, some of the physical acting can be a bit much, to the point I wonder if the weirdness is a cultural translation issue. Sometimes it made me think of the very early films where stage actors who are used to playing to the back row would overact in front of a camera to hilarious degrees. And unfortunately, I have to admit that Godzilla is the weakest part of the film. Not unlike Shin Godzilla, some of it is almost certainly down to the budget, with some really obvious graphical overlays and animations that look like they belong in a computer game. You know, when you see an NPC return to their static state between actions, Godzilla felt like that sometimes. He also walked like a wind-up toy, including the fixed stare straight ahead. Then there's the explanation as to how he became what he is. Everything else in the film is from the perspective of the protagonist or someone close to him. But suddenly, we are shown completely unrelated clips of nuclear explosions and maps. It's probably the biggest fault of the film that this jarring display is how it explains Godzilla's nuclear origins. But despite these negatives, Godzilla Minus One is absolutely deserving of praise and of the applause it received in the cinema. It is not just a monster flick. It is not just a period piece. It is not just a character examination. It is something greater and something to be celebrated. I look forward to when the film comes out on digital so we can explore it more thoroughly. Until then, thank you for watching.